and we'll go back to that uh, keynote. All right, the presentation's being recorded. Hopefully um, that this will work out so that uh, we're able to use it because students ask all kinds of questions and I wanna have this resource for them when I don't have time to do a presentation. So it is being recorded. Anything you say in the chat or in any viewable video will be recorded. By using chat or video at this time, you're consenting to be part of this recording, which may be distributed widely. All right. Uh, who in the world are you? Drop your stage name and location in the chat. I am Joe Weldon. She, her, in my kitchen in New York City, New York. USA. And feel free, like if you don't want to say anything, um, don't worry. Um, at any time, you don't have to participate in the chat. Let's see if everybody's in there. All right, we're just uh, saying when and where we are, who and where we are, <laughs> when, who cares? Who cares? I don't care what time it is there. Hi, Lix and Hubby. These are uh, old friends of mine who are regularly at the slipper room. All right, anybody else want to share before uh, I change what we're doing? Anybody else want to say where you are? We're going to have uh, unrecorded networking time if we have time. All right. All right, remember that we are recording. Do you see the recording icon? Give me a thumbs up if you do. Okay. And I um, lost my mouse like I usually do when I go into, yeah. So I lose my mouse all the time when I go into, um, keynote, I'm trying to let someone in. May not be able to, hang on one sec, sorry about that. Sorry about this. My mouse is invisible. Hang on one sec. I'm gonna hit the escape button. Closing the chat. Don't chat anymore and turn off your video. All right. Uh, last time I'm gonna mention this because we've got to get going. No chat from now on until, I mean, we'll go back to chat, but I don't want any chat during the presentation. I'll tell because I'm so easily distracted, y'all. We got to stay on track. And also, um, uh, please turn off your video. Turn off your video. And I'm going to play this, which means I cannot mouse around, which is another reason I don't want you to chat. No chatting. We will chat. We will chat. I mean, what's the point of a Zoom if you can't chat at all, right? So I'll read this one more time. I'm about to start the presentation. During the presentation, please do not chat. I'll reopen chat after I've gone through the slides. Your input is super important. Please write down on your pad of paper your comments, corrections, or questions for when I reopen the chat, which I will. At that time, you'll be invited to drop one, a single one of those comments or questions into the chat. Um, I want to hear everything you have to say, but I can only hear from everyone in the allotted time if we limit it a bit. This isn't the last time uh, this meeting is going to happen. So, you know, and I'm available afterwards. Um, I have impulse control issues myself, and I understand how difficult this is, right? At the very end, we will have an open networking session with video. Uh, last reminder, this presentation is being recorded for wide distribution, which may or may not happen, depending on how I feel about my job. Um, by speaking in the chat or appearing in video, you will be consenting to be a part of the recording. This is the business of burlesque and introduction. It is a primer on how to get bookings and burlesque variety shows. 
developed for solo independent performers who create their own material, which means I won't be offering tips, generally speaking, for anybody who doesn't fit this profile. Uh, what I'm about to talk about, these are basic guidelines and suggestions. If you're inclined to take them as rules, please don't. Don't do that to yourself. There are exceptions and variations that we're not discussing in this presentation. Everybody take a deep breath. Deep breathing. Deep breathing. I'm going to just pour information into you. I'm just pouring it into you. Get ready to feel yourself becoming full of valuable information. Prepare to be energized and inspired and ready to get to work. Uh, just briefly, my qualifications. I've been working in the neo burlesque scene for over 25 years and have traveled the world to teach and perform. I've been running the New York School of Burlesque and working with new performers, many of whom have subsequently traveled the world to teach and perform and even to win titles for over 15 years. I run the master class at Coney Island from 2005 to 2019. Uh, they haven't run it the past two years. Um, I am a founding and current member of the BurleyCon Board of Directors. I've been helping to produce the Burlesque Hall of Fame Weekender for over 15 years as a volunteer. Uh, I was voted one of the, I was voted one of the, sorry, someone's trying to get in and there's nothing I can do about it. I was voted one of the top 10 burlesque figures of the decade on the burlesque top 50s only decade poll. I've published two books with major publishers in spite of not having a college degree, a college cohort or publishing industry connections meaning I know how to go where I'm told I'm not wanted and make my way in. And this sounds like bragging and I am, I'm totally proud of all this, but my intention is to make you feel secure that you're listening to someone who has information you can really use. My goal is your success. I wish I could let that person in, but I just don't see how I can without stopping the share. Hang on, we're stuck for a sec. Okay. This is what you should have on hand before you approach producers and venues. You should have a stage name. Um, and remember, these aren't rules, these are guidelines. Um, social media and or website with that stage name. So separate from whatever you use personally. Um, an email address with that stage name, like your stage name at gmail.com, or if you have a website, your stage name at stagename.com or whatever, just make sure your stage name is in your email address. Um, you will find performers for whom that is not the case. That doesn't matter. It's easier on everybody if your stage name is in your email address. Uh, you should have at least two complete and bookable acts. So that means that um, you don't have to do anything to them before you do them. And then if you wanna create new acts, like if there's a theme show or something like that, go for it, right? But before you even approach anybody, you should have two acts. Um, then you should have a one paragraph bio and personal mission statement. So the bio is what they might use to uh, introduce you. And the personal mission statement is for you. Why, are, why am I doing this? Why am I doing this? Who do I wanna be? What kind of burlesque do I like? What kind of burlesque shows do I like? Um, who are my inspirations? That's your personal mission statement. It doesn't need to be in your bio, but know what it is. It'll inform your bio. Uh, video of those acts. Everybody knows that there's a pandemic, right? So do your video the best you can with the resources you have, whether it's in your house, or you rent a studio and record it there, which is always kind of fun because you can really control it, but sometimes the lighting is unbelievably hideous. Um, or if you have live video, whatever you can do. If you're skillful at editing, honestly, that's one of the most valuable assets you can have in today's burlesque market. But people know, people understand what everybody is going through. And if you're new, they understand that you're new 
and experienced producers will be able to see your potential, even if your video is not up to professional levels. But make it the best you can. They need to be able to see what you're doing. They need to be able to see your face. They need to be able to have a sense of your costume. Um, use the space you're in, go forward and back. Don't just stand at the back and demonstrate it. You know, show them you have stage presence. Um, Seven, have photos of you in burlesque mode. These can be selfies if you have a chance to do them with a photographer, that's better. But you know, everybody knows what everybody's going through. Um, by in burlesque mode, I mean, you don't need your actor headshot. You don't need your lingerie model thing. It should be you showing yourself as a performer in a performance costume that you actually have in case they ask about it. Again, if you gotta do selfies, Everybody knows what everybody's going through right now. Uh, we're all in this pandemic together. We're, we're, we may not all be in the same exact boat, but boy, we're on the same rough river, so, okay. Um, and you should have your music properly labeled and shareable. That means that if they say, yes, I want you, please send me your music, you're good to go. So um, see the article on burlesquedaily.blogspot.com. Go ahead and pick up your phone or other device because I want you to have this uh, knowledge handy. Uh, so go to burlesquedaily.blogspot.com. If you can't find it, typing it in, uh, Google burlesque daily or daily burlesque. Uh, and if you, that doesn't turn it up, Google burlesque daily Joe Weldon. Uh, but get it, open it. Right now, look at the search engine up on the right. Um, that is for that blog, not for Blogspot in general. Type in apply yourself and look at the results of that search. That gives you a lot of information about, um, you know, what it means to have your music properly labeled, what a parrot, what a bio is, um, how to make yourself organized so that when producers ask you for photos and videos, you're ready, uh, what, what um, resolution those photos need to be at, go ahead and check out that article. And we're gonna move on, but I want you to know that that resource is already there for you. So how to get gigs. The easiest way to get gigs is to already have producers and venues lined up with people panting to have you in their shows. But you know I'm kidding, nobody starts there. So how to really get gigs. Uh, network at shows, whether in person or online, right? So networking means getting to know people and letting them know your interests. So when you're networking, keep in mind that every human being to whom you are talking is also packed with stress and is also struggling to meet their goals, right? So network gently, respectfully, humanely, and compassionately. Don't overwhelm people with your interest. Take your time, take lots of time. So, you know, if you go to see a show online or in person, if the chat is open, chat. Like if somebody says, I'm in Denver, go, oh, I'm in Denver too, you know, like that kind of thing. Um, Network on social media, but again, take your time, be respectful. Follow producers and performers and venues that you like, observe them for a while. That's what I mean when I say, take your time. Read through their feed. Which posts do they like? Who do they respond to, right? That's how you can avoid um, overstepping or maybe getting involved with somebody who's not great you know, all of a sudden this person seems like they're your best friend and you find out that they're, you know, really problematic in some way. We'll talk about that briefly. Um, take your time, be respectful, assume that every human being you encountered is absolutely overwhelmed, but never apologize. You have a lot to offer. You are valuable. If you're performing, they want you, they're looking for performers, right? So being respectful doesn't mean apologizing for taking up their time. It means acknowledging they're busy, but you don't apologize. You are valuable. Um, number three, look for casting calls on social media and other forums like Variety Magazine or whatever. I don't even know what all forums are out there. 
unfortunately, Facebook, uh, which is the source of so much nonsense drama of I, people that I sometimes suspect are tipsy, getting into fights. Um, but Facebook is also an extremely valuable tool for networking and personal relationships. Like I talk to my family on there. Facebook is, you know, it's valuable, but you got to watch out. Uh, join groups that have casting calls in them, and I'll talk about how to find them. Uh, and when you find those casting calls, read the original poster's instructions and requests and follow them without asking for exceptions because you're new, right? Don't say, I am new, what does this mean? If you have to ask that, you're not ready to respond to that casting call. If you have a friend in burlesque, uh, message them privately and ask. Um, careful reading and listening and then responding to what was actually said is a crucial professional practice in all fields. So we all get excited and anxious. Every single one of us has answered a question that wasn't asked or asked a question that was already answered. It's okay, everybody gets it. But if you do it all the time, you know, then it becomes your pattern and it becomes what people associate with you. Everybody does it, everybody does it, but don't do it all the time. Try not to do it at all. When you do it, forgive yourself, move on, try not to do it again. Um, four, keep your social media prepped for producers to scan it, to get clues about not only what you do on stage, but how you are likely to be backstage. They do look you up and they do care if you appear to be difficult. And I cannot for the life of me tell you what appears to be difficult to individual uh, producers. But think about if you were a producer and you were reading this, would you want to work with this person? Would you want them backstage with all of your equally anxious, self-absorbed, nervous, and excited performers, right? Um, how can you be easy to work with? How can you appear to be easy to work with, right? So on your social media, present yourself as not only a great performer, but as someone who is pleasant to work with. That doesn't mean you have to be nice or ignore problems. It just means that you have to uh, choose the things about which you get excited. Um, number five, if you have it in you, do some cold calling. And this is the hardest thing, but it can produce the greatest results if you do it right. Research for producers and venues that interest you. And I'm gonna follow up on that. So, how to begin your research. Right now, take out your phone or device. Right now. Start by going to Google, Google your city, state, or region, and add the word burlesque and see what comes up. Do it right now. All right. Uh, keep adding more specific words, like add the word uh, burlesque festival onto that and see if anything comes up. When you have time, do the same thing on Yelp and social media. Do it on Facebook, find groups. You know, so uh, to find a group on Facebook, you can research. Um, NY, New York City or NYC burlesque. You gotta be smart. You gotta try different spellings, different iterations. Um, you know, US burlesque, United States burlesque, Canada burlesque, um, you know, um, whatever your interest in burlesque is, look it up. Compare it with the word burlesque and Google it. I know it seems obvious and you're like, I've already, some of you are like, I've already done that. But some of you wonder if that's the best way to do it. It is, it is. It's how you begin your research. When you get your research and you look at, you've come across a um, producer or venue or show or individual that you're interested in, scan their social media, see what they're like, see who they are, right? Um, make sure that they're worth your time and make sure that they are currently active. Right now, you really have to look at the dates and years of people's posts. Hang on one sec. Um, a lot of people have asked me what to look out for to help avoid problematic or flag producers. The reality is that people have been married to serial killers and have not known it. So there's no 100% guarantee anybody is golden, including me, right? So I, I assure you, if you research me long enough, I've been around for 25 years. 
you will find stuff that may make you not want to work with me. And I understand. Um, but you can pick up on things if you take your time, right? Look at what these people are doing now. Where do they come up in your research? How new are they? Being new isn't necessarily bad, but are they too slick for how new they are? Proceed with caution. Are experienced performers interacting with them as if they've known about them for a while? Read their comments, see who they respond to, right? See if the responses seem genuinely engaged, right? That's, you, that's a good sign. It's not a guarantee, but it's a good sign. Um, if you Google them with terms of your concern, like if you're looking to see if somebody is um, sexist, Google their name with the word sexist. You know, something might come up. Uh, it might be nonsense, um, but take your time and study. Use your best judgment. And remember that a lot of fights on uh, social media are not pure, right? So they're motivated by territoriality, personal vendettas as a result of a bad relationship and business or romance, like use your judgment. You got to slow down if you want to make sure that the people you're working with are worth your time. Um, and also, you know, ask your friends, if you know people in burlesque, you know, ask them, say, hey, have you heard of this person? Do you know anything about them? How does this look to you? You got to slow down if you want to avoid problems. And some problems will happen. That's okay. But slowing down will help. Um, whenever someone approaches me to interview me, so I've published a couple books, so I get people contact me to interview me for articles as an expert. Um, I research them before I respond. I Google them. I look at their LinkedIn. I looked at, I look at their social media. If they have no internet presence, I'm very wary. You know, I'll actually read their articles to see their perspective, to see if there's someone I think I can trust with my responses, you know, so you got to take your time. You got to research people. That's how you find the, the gems. That's how you find gems. So uh, types of shows. There are more types of shows than I have time to address here, but this is more than enough to get you going. This, this is aimed for beginners. So uh, friends producing with friends. So a lot of time, the entire burlesque movement started out this way with just a bunch of burlesque people, I mean, a bunch of performers who had burlesque numbers going, let's do a whole burlesque show. Or do you want to do a burlesque show? Pr friends producing with friends. I mean, this is even how movies get made, like big ticket movies. So friends producing with friends, right? Um, so that's one thing. Uh, troops. So this is when a group of people get together and decide to be a troop. Um, and so troops often, they may do auditions or they may be a group of friends. And they're usually, with the exception of a few special guests, the only people you ever see in their shows. Um, three is regular weekly, monthly, or quarterly shows. So, you know, if you, there's a show in your area that happens every week or every month or every quarter, you know what I mean. Um, they're regular shows. Randomly scheduled shows. You know, sometimes I just want to do a show, I'll put it together, right? My shows are usually showcases, and we'll talk about showcases. Um, burlesque venues. So there aren't that many, they're really rare. Every venue that has burlesque shows is not a burlesque venue, but a venue that primarily features burlesque that was built for it, like Dwayne Park or the Slipper Room or the stage at Coney Island that was specifically built out for sideshows and burlesque. Um, those are burlesque venues. Uh, festivals and weekenders. There's actually a website that lists festivals, but everything's so up in the air that there's not a lot there. Uh, and weekenders like Viva Las Vegas and the Burlesque Hall of Fame Weekender. Again, if you don't know what these are, just write it down and, and, do, and Google it and get a sense of whether these are things you care about. Uh, universities. A lot of people don't think about this, but universities will sometimes uh, hire burlesque troops if their mission statement is congruent with the university's values. That's, an, that's, that's a two hour presentation on itself, how to get those gigs. But. Um, and then corporate gigs. And what I always say about corporate gigs is, yeah, right, Coca-Cola is dying to get sued for having strippers at their event. Corporate gigs are usually walk around, costume oriented, they're hardly ever performance oriented, but, but burlesque performers do occasionally get booked in them. 
Um, and then Broadway or Vegas shows, those, uh, those casting calls will appear in uh, the usual venues, right? So Variety Magazine or whatever, I, Broadway World, I don't know because this isn't my jam, but those casting calls are pretty formal. They go out and they're often unionized gigs, right? So you may need to have a special membership to get them. Pay. Hey, Never offer to perform for free. Doesn't mean you should never perform for free. We'll get into that. Common rates in New York City are like, there are friend shows with a split of the door and tips. There are regular shows and venues that pay 50 to $100 per act, possibly plus tips. Holidays and special events, 200 to $2,000. <laughs> um, charge more on New Year's. New Year's is a bitch. Um, corporate, uh, $500 and up for walk around, high end costuming usually required. University, zero to 10K. Um, if someone reaches out, they contact you knowing you will have to travel. They are responsible for all travel costs, including lodging. Uh, that tends to be negotiable, but generally speaking, I can only afford to travel if they're paying for all of that. But somebody might say, you know, I'd like to perform in burlesque in burlesque in Philadelphia. So I'll reach out to Philadelphia and see what's there. In that case, you may end up being responsible for your travel because you made the first contact, but you can ask them if they will help you. And please note, this is the tip of the iceberg. People argue constantly about pay and burlesque. Uh, offering to perform for free is not recommended because usually the producer or venue you're approaching, they're also performers. And that's called undercutting. If you offer a lower rate to get a gig, it's not like you're bidding on a contract. You're walking into a place where people get paid a certain amount and say, I'll perform for less just to get in, right? Uh, people don't like that. Um, okay, times to perform for free are like if it's a benefit or a showcase. Uh, and you should keep an eye out. Like, is this some show that's calling it a benefit they're charging $100 at the door. You are the only performer and they're not offering to pay your car fare. That doesn't make sense, right? So even benefits, you should look at it, but there's nothing wrong with performing for free under conditions that do not undercut things when people should get paid. There's a big joke in the performance community about how you can die of exposure. You can die of exposure, meaning doing gigs for exposure will keep you performing for free forever if people know you're free, if you only take for free gigs. So, you know, and use your judgment. Sometimes a friend will say, hey, um, I'm putting a show together and, um, you know, I wanted to know if you could perform just for tips and they're your friend and you wouldn't do it twice, but you'll do it once. You really have to negotiate all this stuff yourself. People fight about this to the, like this is the hill some people will die on, on Facebook especially. Um, and you should set a minimum for yourself, right? You can say, you know, I don't ever wanna do a split of the door unless it's something exceptional, right? So I'm just not gonna. Um, I don't want to perform for $50 per act. I'll perform for 75. You have to set the minimum for yourself. Sometimes your area may not support the rates you're seeing above. That's, we don't have time to interview everybody about rates in their area in this presentation. Um, but you should set a minimum for yourself. However, we don't have burlesque specific unions, so you can't set anyone else's minimum. I know in some cities, the burlesque, a lot of the burlesque, burlesque producers and performers have gotten together and agreed on a minimum. In New York, they haven't. Everybody's goals are too varied uh, and it just hasn't been possible. But the regular rate for most regular shows and venues in nightlife, which is where most of the burlesque in New York occurs, which is in nightlife, is $50 to $100 per act. Online, it varies even more, right? But you can ask the pay online, set your minimum. What's it worth to you, right? Watch the producer performer who's putting on this online show. Are they credible people? You know, are they people for whom you should perform for a lower rate? I've done online shows and gotten paid a lot. I've done online shows and performed for free because it was somebody's, you know, anniversary or whatever. So I wish I had a solid answer for you, but the real basic, basic answer is that most nightlife gigs 
pay 50 to $100 per act, usually plus tips. And tips can be paid in a bunch of different ways, but just so you know, unless the audience is told otherwise, they assume that their tips are going to be for the performer, not for the producer. Uh, when approaching people, remember that you've done a lot of work and you deserve to be paid. That doesn't mean everyone will be willing to pay you. And sometimes I look at it like this. I have value. If the value I have isn't in their currency, they may not have value to me. I can respect them, appreciate them, pay to see their shows, right? But as someone who might hire me, they may not have value. You are needed. Your art is precious. People want it. You just have, when you create your art, you create an audience. People want you. Not maybe, maybe not everybody you want to want you, but people want you. Focus on the people that want you, not the people that don't, unless you are just someone who really goes a long way by focusing on people who don't want you. Because I have done that in the past and it's worked out for me. But I knew what I was doing, right? I was like, I'm going to people who aren't going to want me. I'm going to get some of them to want me. Now I look for people who want me and I build from there. Remember also that people hire you because they need to fill a position, not because you need a position to fill. They hire you because they need to fill a position, not because you need a job. You are collaborators, right? So um, to sort of wrap it up, I want to say set a goal. What do you want from burlesque? Where do you want to perform in the short run as a beginning performer? And then what can you visualize uh, doing a year from now, two years from now, three years from now, four years from now, right? Visualize that end result in every decision you make. If something doesn't work, ask yourself if you stayed focused on that end result. And if that keeps happening, do you need to change your goals? It's okay to change your goals. Maybe you want something different than you originally thought. But always, always, always visualize your end result in every decision, in every email, right? The only time to not visualize the end result is when you decide what art you want to create because you have to be true to yourself. You are the future of burlesque. Be true to yourself. You are creating burlesque. With every act you make, you are making what burlesque is. So create the burlesque that you want to see in the world. All right. I believe in you. I want you. I'm so excited that you're interested in burlesque. I can't even tell you. All right. So I'm going to open up the chat. Not, I'm not going to put us in a video just yet. Hang on. I'm going to. All right, so I'm going to open up the chat and you can ask me whatever questions you had. Remember, each person gets to do one comment or correction. You may correct me if I said something wrong because sometimes I start rambling, I get excited, or I was writing from a different point of view. Um, one comment, question, or correction. Drop it in the chat right now and I'll get to it. It's question and comment time. Chat is open. Is there such a thing as a burlesque agent, someone who can help guide you toward gigs? They may exist, but they're very uncommon and I have never worked with one and the vast majority of people I know in New York have never successfully worked with one. But if you're, you know, like a dancer and you have an agent or an actor and you have an agent, you know, maybe, but that's just not how it works. Uh, in most cities, there are exceptions. Uh, do you consider burlesque theater? Yes, I do. Do you have to be the best dancer? No. You have to connect to the audience. You have to make the audience feel special. You gotta keep the audience excited. You don't have to be a good dancer. Should you have the same minimum rate for online versus performing in person or should they be different? Mine are the same because that's how my life is. I just can't handle doing it for less. That's an emotional decision. Are business cards dead? They are not. Uh, people love them. You can hand them out to people. Like if you say to somebody like, hey, I know you're busy right now. Um, or, or they're like, oh, let me get your number. But my phone is dead. Give them a business card. Why not? They're cute. And it put a picture on you, picture, name, website, or primary social media with an email address. Why wouldn't you use business cards? 
Um, someone asked a uh, website producer friendly. I can't answer that in too much detail because it's not really, um, we could do a class on it, but just to give you a sense, um, you should have a thing that says, you know, hire me or hiring or want to hire, want to hire if you're, if it's in the first person, me, or if it's in the third person, your name, want to hire blank. And then they click on a page that goes to a photo, some sample videos. It doesn't have to be your whole act. Um, and some contact information and then, you know, so the, the page doesn't need to be geared toward producers. Remember, producers are not the audience. Think about the audience. There's more audience members than performers. If there weren't, burlesque would be gone. Think about yourself as constantly looking to um, connect with your audience, not with producers. If the audience wants you, producers will hire you. Is a PDF video of a performer a real a good tool to present yourself to producers? Yes. But what they'll usually say is, do you have a video of this act? You can put a reel on your page. And then when you cold call, just put that link to that page in your email. What's the appropriate way to start producing your own shows? It's a different class. But do it, do it. And also, by the way, how to produce your own shows is in. Did you click on that burlesque daily or not? Go to burlesquedaily.blogspot.com right now and click learn to produce shows. It's in there. You have to take off all your clothes. I am shy. It depends on the producer. Generally speaking, the audience isn't sure if you're done, if you don't. But I, I always have students in my shows that aren't ready to go to pasties and g-strings and they do great. You spoke about reaching out to producers. What would you write if you were cold calling, DMing someone on Instagram? So it depends on whether or not they have a how to approach me on their site. Some of them say, I'm not, a, I, I, I'm not ready to hear from new performers at this time. Then leave them the hell alone, right? But um, cold calling, I would say, hello, I've been following your show online or I've been going to your show and I've always loved it. Uh, remember that you don't have to see the physical show. Like a lot of people can't go out right now. Everybody gets them. You don't have to explain that, right? Um, let them know that you love their show and um, say, I'm a new performer. If you're looking for new performers, I would love to participate. Uh, here is a link to my page. Uh, I hope to hear back from you. Uh, if you're unable to respond at this time, I will continue to enjoy your shows. Thank you very much. Don't apologize for reaching out you have something of value to offer. It just, you know, it's a matter of timing and their, their situation and their aesthetic. You have value. Don't apologize for reaching out. If their page says, don't bug me, don't bother them. Uh, should new performers focus only on getting hired for shows where we firmly fit the aesthetic? E.g., if you have a Princess Leia routine, should you only focus on their less shows? Um, you can tell by the producer's website and their other shows and their the description in their casting call, whether they are open to a variety of aesthetics. Read carefully, respond appropriately. And if that doesn't answer your question, feel free to ask more. Uh, how much money can you make as a newbie? Um, zero to a million dollars. <laughs> Seriously, new people shouldn't get paid less than experienced performers. There are people who wildly disagree with that. So there are shows that have different tiers, but from my perspective, if you are new and your rate is high and you're getting it, you're raising everybody's rate. Uh, where do you buy all these costumes? I don't buy them, I assemble them, right? So I'll get things and glue stuff to them, make a match. I'll buy used costumes, I'll commission costumers, I'll make things. Uh, most of the burlesque costumes that you can just buy, like it's a burlesque costume, you have to personalize in some way. Unless you're just performing for friends, it doesn't matter, right? Oh, I'm glad the answer is helpful. How can someone who cannot completely be out uh, having a public social media profile for work still network successfully? I have been out as a sex worker and everything all my life, and it has definitely worked both for and against me. Uh, the best answer I can give you is that I don't know how to control things in this age of the internet. Um, you can lower the risk. You can lower the risk by using only your stage name, making sure that nobody calls you by your real name on your stuff. But I, 
this, the internet, let's say that the internet is not private. The internet is not private. Can you talk about the value of competitions for newer burlesque performers? Yeah, it, you know, okay. So this is the thing about festivals and competitions. It's a great way to be seen and to network. You'll meet people, you'll make friends. Same with classes, by the way. You'll meet people, you'll make friends. Um, so the value of competitions is meeting people and like uh, having other producers see you. I have seen competitions where a person who did not win got the most bookings out of the competition out of being seen by other producers. I, I'm not gonna name them. <laughs> I can think of so many, I can think of so many, right? So uh, the value of competitions is being seen, meeting people and getting the experience of stage time, which will always improve your performance. Aside from essential things like act videos and photos, what in your opinion makes for a strong website, social media profile? Okay, so I'm not doing this anymore. I'm established, I'm retired, whatever. Uh, but a strong website social media profile is pretty consistent, right? So you post once a week or a couple times a week. You post uh, material that's either similar or interestingly contrasting. Um, you have good captions. You have good spelling. Uh, if you speak in a vernacular, you commit to it and you know let it rip, like be who you are. Um, yeah, so... I don't know if that's helpful, but um, yeah, do do photos, do videos. If you have a pet and your pet likes to be on camera and you like the idea of sharing them, bring your pet in. Uh, talk about what you love about burlesque. Um, talk about um, inspirations. Uh, talk talk about if you're working on a costume, show bits and pieces, and search other the. Uh, social media profiles of other people and see how they use it and see what works for you because there's so many routes to success on social media that you'll definitely get some inspiration. Just don't do anybody else's exact thing because that alienates people. Uh, someone forgot that their cell phone number was associated with FB. Uh, yes, so my do not, watch out. Facebook has your cell phone number on it. People can identify you by that. So. Keep that in mind and, and you'll have to do research on controlling that. If you do not want to perform down to your pasties and G-string, will that lessen the bookings you can get? Yeah, it might, um, but just do the book, get the bookings you want first and see how you feel about it. But it might not, but it might. Should you, best way to share your digit music digitally, should I still bring, be bringing a CD? Okay, I want everybody right now, and Selena, I'm so glad you asked this because I'm excited to talk about this. Go to burlesquedaily.blogspot.com and do a search for music. Okay, so burlesquedaily.blogspot.com. People will usually ask you to send them either a link to uh, file sharing, something like Dropbox, or they will um, ask you to attach it to your email. It's really important to send the music the way that they ask and to send it as soon as they ask. Really, really important. Nobody wants a Spotify link. Nobody wants a YouTube link. You have to buy the music. You have to have the file. Is it important to focus on specific persona, character, or aesthetics so that audiences and producers understand best what your acts are about? Or is it okay to have a variety of personas that you perform as? It's okay to have a variety. Um, the more constant your persona is, the more people will trust uh, what you're doing. But if you have a bunch of high quality acts and a bunch of different personas, they're not gonna care. More questions? Ask away. Ask, ask, ask. Hit me up. Ask me some tough questions. I'm here for you. This matters to me. My goal is your success. Don't be shy. I mean, the recording is on. <laughs> People are going to see your chat. So. How should you follow up after a booking? You know, it's perfectly OK. 
there's two really great ways to follow up after a booking. One is to post a thank you to that producer on your social media in a post or a story or whatever the equivalent of that is on various media. There is nothing people in burlesque like more than to have their, their social media information shared. Like this, I had a great time in the, at this show. You've got to check it out or check it out when it comes back around. Much thanks to these wonderful producers, blah, blah, blah. Uh, you can also email them and say, thank you so much. I loved working with you and I'm welcome to feedback if you have any. Um, I look forward to watching more of your shows. Is it appropriate to invite producers you're interested in working with to a showcase? They won't come. If they know you, they will. They won't come. I mean, they'll come. Sometimes producers just come to the burlesque showcase, um, but they generally will not come at invitation. They might like the invitation though. How did you get into writing about burlesque? Um, I have been a writer for a long time. Uh, I started writing a, the equivalent of a blog that was called G-Strings Forever, which is what became Burlesque Daily. Um, and so I've written content. And if you are a content writer, you know, contact me. Maybe we can work, you know, work out something. I don't know. I don't know. Who knows what's happening next? But yeah, um, so writing about burlesque is something that I did in a time when nobody was writing about it. So I got a lot of attention. So it was easy. But if you're social media handy or whatever, um, people love to read about it. You could, you know, have an Instagram with writing in it. You could have a TikTok with writing in it. You could write Facebook posts. You could write a blog. Uh, you could approach magazines with ideas for articles about burlesque. You could do it on YouTube. Do you choreograph your own act? 95% uh, of independent burlesque performers choreograph their own acts. Some people pay other people to help them choreograph them. Do you have to have a skill for this? Um, you are an expert audience member and you know what works, right? You have to have a beginning, a middle, and an end. If you're really interested in learning about this, um, go to um, burlesquedaily.blogspot.com and look up choreography. <laughs> Any advice on building a thriving business in a small area where there's been inconsistency from previous burlesque troops? We're in a small area where the major employer is a university and is relatively conservative. Find somewhere besides a uni university. Uh, go to bars. But just approach them like you don't know about that problem if you want. Uh, how have you seen the industry change with regard to accepting more diversity of bodies and backgrounds? It has improved, it has not perfected. There are still issues, but um, I feel like social media has been a big help in people standing up for themselves and going, look, I'm not just some individual with a problem. This is a real thing and you need to think about it. You know, no matter what your, you know, friend who's black or fat or whatever says to you, there's a whole world out here that has a feeling about it, right? So it has changed and it has improved. It's always intended to be diverse, but it didn't always know what diversity was. We had huge problems with cultural appropriation in the past that have not been resolved, but have been improved. Um, and people are doing it less and people are understanding why not to do it more. More people are understanding, some people don't. Um, and um, uh, a lot of out sex workers have, you know, stood their ground on that. Um, yeah, so it's improved, it's not perfect, there are problems. Um, Piggybacking off of that, do you think it's harder for performers with bigger bodies to get hired still? It depends on the gig. I, I would say that there is, uh, it can matter. Um, and I think that that's messed up. Um, and I think that generally speaking, if you're a strong performer, you'll get booked. But I do think that you have to work, sometimes have to work harder than people who are a little more um, supposedly palatable audiences. What's happening though is that audiences are saying, I like that, I want that. You know, you have some performer who doesn't conform to some skinny white male producer's desire and they've got a, tens of thousands of followers and people screaming how much they love them. You're proving them wrong. You're creating an audience. So we know for a fact that audiences want that diversity 
And one of the ways that we've fought it is by producing our own shows. I'm over 50, I'll be 60 this year. And a lot of people don't really want me. Um, you know, it's something to think about, but I do think it's better than it used to be. And I think it's getting better. And I think um, the most important thing is to follow performers who look like you and learn from them, how they get gigs, uh, how they interact with producers. Um, if they call people out a lot, I, um, you know, see how they do it, see what responses they get. Um, follow people who look like you in addition to people who don't, right? Because the important thing is to see that there are gigs for you. 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 You have an audience waiting for exactly how you look and exactly what you have right now. Right now, there's an audience that wants you as you are. Uh, would it be appropriate to cold call producers for other cities? Yes, but research them like crazy before you approach them. Any advice on working with a show as someone who has been problematic? Um, they are at most shows and you cannot avoid them. That's too complicated because we're running out of time, but yes. I do have answers, but it's a long answer. Uh, in my country, burlesque is a new thing. We have no producers. What kind of bars should I look for? Uh, look for bars that have a, sort of a sexy vibe and start there. Uh, and a queer vibe. Like if you're a, a performer with a queer aesthetic, a visibly queer aesthetic, look for visibly queer aesthetic bars. Have you witnessed any experience with people with trans bodies and burlesque. Uh, I have been working with trans people in burlesque since I started. I was working with trans people in the sex industry. So what experiences do you mean? You mean, are they getting gigs? Because yes, they are. Yeah. So again, like Google that, Google transgender burlesque or queer burlesque or non-binary burlesque. Many burlesque locations I've gone are open to photography. Can I communicate to my producer if I prefer no photography for my actors at reaching? You know, that is so hard because iPhones. It, the uh, host can't spend the whole time yelling at people to put away their iPhones. So I wore, uh, one of the last places I worked regularly was bathtub gin where people aren't supposed to take pictures at all. And they still occasionally did, um, but generally they didn't. But, it but it's hard for an individual performer to say, turn off your cameras now. If they have hired a professional photographer, then that's easy. You just say no. What do you think specifically about auditioning at a venue for free? If they do it all the time, they're exploiting people. If they do it occasionally, they're sincere. Any other questions? All right, is everybody ready to meet each other? I'm gonna go to video and turn off the, uh... oh, one more question before I stop the recording. I haven't seen many burlesque performers with small boobs. With small boobs, is it harder to get gigs? No, I work with tons of people with small boobs. Yeah, I do, I do, I do. I mean, I have, you know, big old, it's, you know, I have implants, big fake tits. Um, some people won't hire me because I have fake tits. But I'm, you know, I'm busy, so. All right, one last question, anybody, before I turn off? Did you ask a question and I missed it? Anybody? When approaching a producer, do you include your rate? Fuck no. Yeah, I know, it's a really good question. Um, they will tell you their rate and you uh, will make up an excuse to want, <laughs> right? Use your best judgment on saying no when people are offering below your rate, right? But I, I have never in my life sent somebody an email saying, hey, I'd like to work at your thing and here's my rate. Unless they ask for, their, for that somewhere on their website or in their casting call, right? So if someone contacts me and says, hey, we're doing this event. What are your rates? But I don't like, yeah, like you don't email Dwayne Park and say, hey, I'd like to work there. Here's my rate. 
Is that helpful? All right, so we're gonna, I'm gonna stop the recording. Everybody who's watching the recording, I love you. Please keep sending your questions and I'll keep putting these together. And if you want more advanced advice than I gave in here, email me and let me know and we'll put together an intermediate. All right, so thank you so much. I'm so glad you wanna do burlesque. You are the future of burlesque. Be true to yourself, it's really important. And the recording is stopping. And three, two, one.